I'm Dr. Emmanuel Mokuye. You're welcome to another episode of Consumption to Production Niger. Today, we'll be talking about how you can make money in Nigeria by producing ethanol. And the required raw material is cassava. Ethanol is used in the production of paints, perfumes, cosmetics, pharmaceutical. It's used in the production of chemicals such as acetic acid, in the production of alcoholic beverage such as your bitters, wine, spirits. It is also used in the food industry as uh, preservatives and uh, it is used as a biofuel. There is a huge opportunity in the production of ethanol in Nigeria. Let's examine the facts. Facts. According to Market Forces Africa, Nigeria imports 350 million liters of ethanol annually. And this is valued at about $476 million. Fact. According to Africa for Investors, Nigeria is the largest producer of cassava in the world, with an annual production exceeding 59 million metric tons. According to Observatory of Economic Complexity, in 2022, Nigeria was ranked as the 23rd in the world largest importer of ethanol. It is estimated that the job opportunity is about 165,000 jobs. Now let's talk about the states where we can get the required raw material. Emo state, Cross River state, Rivers state, Ondo state, Delta state, or your state, Kogi state. Kwaibom State, Benue State, Edo State, Bayasa State, Kwara State, Abia State, and Anambra State. Let's talk about the project information. The factory size is about 610 square meters. The land space required is 100 by 400. The output capacity is 10 tons per day. The working time is 12 hours. The total power required is estimated to be about 250 kilowatts. Classification is a medium scale factory. The number of workers required is between 10 people per shift to 15 people per shift. The regulators, if branding, are NAVDAC and SUN. Now let's talk about the equipment required. There are five processes, and each process has a number of equipment required, but the total number of workers required are 10 people per shift. The first process here is the liquefaction process, of which you need the liquefaction tank, pumps, and piping, and the heating system. The next is the saccharification process, of which you need the saccharification tank, piping, instrumentation, pumps, and valves. The next is the fermentation process. And here you need the fermentation tank, piping, instrumentation, pumps, and valve. The next is the distillation process, where you need the distillation columns, reboiler, condenser, piping, instrumentation, pumps, and valves. The last, which is my favorite process, packaging and storage. Here you need a storage tank. Let's talk about the production process. But before we do, if you have not seen my video on the production of cassava flour, I will ask that you pause this video, go back and watch that video before you continue with this video. As this video is a continuation of a process in that video known as the grind. If you're still on, I am assuming you have seen the video of 
how to produce cassava flour and you understand the process all the way to the grind. So we can continue from the grind process. So as you get the cassava grinded, you bring it to the next process here, which is the liquefaction process. And from the liquefaction process, it goes into the saccharification process and then into the fermentation tank, after which it goes into the distillation tank. When it comes out of the distillation columns and that process, it gets packaged or stored. Now let's talk about the process in details. The first process here is the liquefaction process. And the inputs are cassava mash, water, and the alpha amylase enzyme. The equipment required is the liquefaction tank. And the output is a partially liquefied stash slurry. Let's talk about the process. This process exists to partially break down stash from molecules into shorter chain dextrins. It's done by first heating cassava mesh with steam and to help it gelatinize uh, the starch with a temperature of about 105 degrees centigrade. The alpha amylase is then added to break down the gelatinized starch into dextrins. The temperature is then maintained for 30 to 60 minutes. The next process here is the saccharification process. The inputs are liquefied slurry and uh, the glucoamylase enzymes. The equipment required is the saccharification tank. The output is a sugary solution. Let's talk about the process. This process exists to complete the conversion of dextrins into fermentable sugars. It starts by first cooling the liquefied cassava slurry from about 85 degrees centigrade down to between 55 degrees centigrade to 60 degrees centigrade using a heat exchanger. A food grade acid or base is then added to help adjust the slurry pH to 4.5 to 5.0. The glucoamylase enzyme is then added, followed by stirring uh, to ensure a uniform distribution of the enzyme. The next process is the fermentation process. And the input here is the sugary solution and yeast. The equipment required here is the fermentation tank. Output is a fermented ethanol rich broth. Let's talk about the process. Now, this process exists to ferment sugars into ethanol. In this process, the mash from the previous process is cooled to between 30 degrees centigrade to 32 degrees centigrade. And then yeast of about 5 to 10% in volume is added. The solution is then stirred in the fermentation tank. Uh, the sugar content is then measured every six to eight hours. When sugar content drops to below 1% and ethanol reaches 12 to 14%, the fermentation is complete. Now, the next process is the distillation process. The input here is the fermented broth. The equipment required are the distillation column reboiler, and condenser. The output is about 95% crude ethanol. Let's talk about the process. Now, this process exists to separate ethanol from water and solids. In this process, the fermented mash is heated using the reboiler to a boiling point of about 7.74 to 75 degrees centigrade. The solids, spent yeast, and the heavy compounds remain at the bottom of the tank, while the ethanol-rich vapors are further distilled to increase the ethanol concentration and to remove impurities such as fossil oils, aldehydes, 
and esters, things that are heavier than the ethanol itself. This process produces a purified ethanol to approximately 92 to 95% concentration. This can be sent to dehydration to achieve about 99.5% pure ethanol. That is if a higher concentration is required. Now the last process, my favorite process, packaging and storage process. Input here is the ethanol. The equipment required is a storage tanks slash drums. The output is a packaged ethanol. Now this process serves uh, to store the ethanol appropriately. Now let's take a look at the 3D model. To get the required equipment, you can import them or you can get them locally made in Nigeria. Now, you know me and uh, I will always advocate for locally made equipment and I can fabricate this equipment for you. Uh, I can also help you set up the factory. I have a team of experienced engineers in Nigeria there and this is what they do. This is how they make a living and I can tell you they are very good engineers. Now, if you need me to help, send me a message on WhatsApp at uh, 240-389-9304. Again, it's uh, plus one, 240-389-9304. The number is shown on your screen. Let me know in the comment section if you would like more information. Uh, and uh, if there's any factory, any factory at all that you would like me to talk about on the next video, I'm eager to hear what you have to say on the comment section. So please don't hold back. Let me hear what you have to say. Now, above all, remember, the word impossible is a fool's favorite quote. But with God, all things are possible. Start small, grow big, stay consistent. Until next time, I remain your optimistic friend, Dr. Emmanuel Mokuni, aka Dr. Industrial. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you on the next one.